Hey everyone, Darren Carnell here. Um, I've not uploaded anything to my public YouTube for about a month when I did the David Tennant um, repaint, but the edited version where it was like a whole thing in 10 minutes, I think. Now, I am constantly uploading to YouTube for my Patreon account. I do that twice a week. Um, whatever I'm working on that's going to be part of a tutorial, they get uploaded twice a week. And the people on my Patreon get to watch the whole process from the original head as it comes to me, all the way through to the fully finished painted head, which can take me a week or two, depending on what I'm painting. Um, but I've not put any put anything up, if I can speak in English. <laughs> I've not put anything up for about a month since that David Tennant head. And I wanted to give you guys something to watch, something to look at. So I've taken a small segment of one of my Patreon videos um, and it will let you have a look at how I put detail on skin. I'm working on a Clint Eastwood statue um, from the Dollars Trilogy, The Man With No Name. And the statue is about, I don't know, 18 inches tall or something. It's quite a big thing. So it's much bigger than my usual six scale heads that I work on. And I've been working on that. And one of the videos I was doing, um, adding detail to the skin uh, using one of the techniques that I do. And there's always a bunch of techniques that happen all the way through a paint job. But one of them, I decided to cut out and let you watch that a little bit. And it's where I use a brush and flick on detail to get random flecks of paint all over, but in a very subtle way. So you can see it when you look for it, but you don't really notice it. It doesn't stand out a lot. But when you do many layers of that, it gives the impression of a more detailed and more realistic skin because our skin is not, for most of us, is not porcelain smooth. If you look, there's tiny little things going on. So that's what I try and recreate in the things that I paint. And it's a technique that I've been doing for a couple of years now. I didn't use to at the beginning. And when I compare the stuff that I paint now, with the stuff that I used to paint 11 years ago when I started doing this. It's a world of difference. So this technique is one of the ones that can be useful. So I figured I would cut out a, I think it's a 15 minute video from one of my um, Patreon um, tutorial videos. It's usually 45 minutes or an hour, twice a week that they get. So I've taken out 15 minutes that shows this technique Figured I'd give you guys something to watch because you've not seen anything for a while. There will be more edited videos coming soon. Um, I've just not had time to edit things together. I'm painting about 15 things at the same time. But when they are all done, and, and some of them are done, and when I've got time to just sit there and edit them, you will get more videos showing edited, you know, the full process edited into 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Um, but for now, Here's this um, detail piece showing the flicking of the paint for about 15 minutes. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, I think I'm going to do some bristle flicking. And I think I want to do it with quite a bright red, but with a bit of brown in it so let's take some of that red let's take some leather or chocolate leather for now so in here bright red and some leather brown let's get a little bit more brown in there Um, let's thin it right down, right down, right down, right down. Chuck a load of water in there because I need it thin. Let's see if this works on this brush. I was going to get a different brush, but if this brush works, might as well do it with this. Okay. Looks like it might be working. Let's see. So I'm going to 
flick, 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 flick. Do, I'm going to do them on this side and then I will see if I can bring the focus of the camera really up close and see if it's possible because the problem is I need space to actually have my hand in front of it but I want to see if it's possible to capture the flicked paint I know you can't really see much. Oh, doesn't help <laughs> that I'm doing it off the camera. I know you can't really see much because it's such a subtle effect that I'm doing that most of it you can't, you just can't see. But let me grab the um, camera settings, and we want to move the. Focus, where are we? See, basically, if I can see these little red dots, that's what we've just been doing. And there's some here, and there's a few there, and they're not on that side. What's on this side is just sort of the, the dabbing work that I did. So let me... This, get some more paint on, flick the excess off. Let's see if I can do this because it's going to be weird because I've got to be looking at the screen to make sure it's there, to make sure it's in focus because it's a very close area and be able to do it, which is sort of difficult because my hand needs to be there. So that's the that thing, I'm just sort of slowly allowing the bristles to flick. I'm not doing it yet, but I'm just showing you. Slowly allow the bristles to flick like that. There's the focus there. But doing it hard enough to flick some. So where's the face? Let's get the, the face in focus. Okay. All right, I will see if I can do this. Do some down here. Now, when you get some that are a little bit too strong, like that one on the nose, while it's wet, you can just go dab and it just softens them up. Let's try and you know, see there's one that I missed there that's dried, but that's okay, just paint over it. Or it'll probably still be wet enough to just wet it with a brush. So let me have a Brief look. Let's do a little bit more. Maybe try and put some on the side of his nose. And on the other side. Do some more on the cheeks.
So you can see one that went on too hard there and dried. But the rest of all these, quite subtle. And especially when you get them up here like this, when you do that, and you can sort of see a few there, and there's a few there, and there's a few on the side of the nose. When you do that, and then you do some in a few different colours and a few different shades. Hang on, get the focus back. When you do that, a few different colours and a few different shades. Um, so, different shades of red, maybe some um, leather brown sort of colour, a bit like that. Um, maybe a bit of purple, maybe a bit of blue grey, maybe a bit of pale flesh, different kinds of colours depending on what you think the mixture of markings on that particular character would be. And when you do that, it just adds a depth to the skin that, now in this case, there's quite a lot of sculpted detail on the face anyway. So in this case, we're just, <laughs> it looks like I've cut my finger open. In this case, we're just adding to that and bringing that sculpt to life. But in some cases, you'll be painting things that have got quite bland, quite boring sculpts. So in that case, you'll be adding the detail. Um, and bringing a sculpt that would otherwise look very dead and very artificial, bringing that to life and making that look more alive and more real. I mean, it's not just that flicking that does it. That's, you're watching the videos, you know, it's one of many things that, that I do, that you can do. Um, one of many techniques, one of many tricks, you want to call it that. But it's a thing that I never used to do, even up until quite recently, up until, I don't know, a year or two ago, uh, the quality of my painting sort of jumped quite a lot. Um, so adding stuff like that with everything else really makes a big difference. So let's see if I can fix that one that went on too dark. Bit of water on a brush, give it a scrub. It's thinned right down and I've just seen another one on top of the Adam's apple. So again, bit of water, thin it down, give it a scrub and most of the paint comes off. Okay, so I'm going to do the same, but with some brown. Um, let's put that in there. Let's get some leather brown. So that was that reddish colour that we just done done them with. So here I've just got some leather brown. Chuck in a load of thinner. Chuck in a load of water because I want these to be subtle. So very thin. Um, let's do them with a different brush. I mean that last brush actually worked really well. So I'll do it with this brush this time. Now there's not that much paint here because I don't really want to do that many. And I'm just going to do it at the normal height because I can see what I'm doing better and can control it better than when it's right under the camera, which is great for you guys. And I know you can see more, but it's actually quite difficult for me to paint when it's up there. So I'm just 
adding in some very subtle very faint, very watered down flex to the to the skin. I mean, really tiny details. They, these would almost be like, you know, pores on the skin or something. It's just, it's just adding some life to it, but not necessarily what you can obviously see. They don't stand out. So let's do a few more on the head because that's going to be under shadow. So I don't mind darkening that bit. In fact, while I've got this colour, you know what? Let's blob someone off the tip of my finger. Why not? I can just see a bit where I thought, you know what, that'd be a good random colour there. We just dirty it on with my finger. There you go. <laughs> Why not? There's no rules. No one can say, oh, you can't do that. That's not the way you do it. Well, I'm painting it, so it is the way I do it. You will always get people who say that you shouldn't do a thing a certain way. Well, bugger them. You do whatever works for you. Now here, we're just doing a bit of colour right up in the edges. It's the same faint brown colour. I'm just doing some right up in the edges. And then dragging down with my finger just to fade it away. Just to create a bit of a shadow colour. Shadow edge or something. Let's do the same up there. Let's get the edge of where the hair would be and then just fade it away because it's going up under the hat that's going to be under shadow anyway so just exaggerate that and help bring it along so when it's under there it'll look good let me just I'm just holding this off camera, sorry, so I can see it under different light. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so I'm going to get that same brown, very pale, watered down stuff and get most of it off the brush I just want a tiny amount and I just want to add some under the eyes I just want to add some to the end of the nose maybe Let's do some to the bottom of the cheeks. This is a very subtle colour because there's almost nothing on the brush here. Side of the nose, bottom of the cheeks going into there. Um, let's get a bit more colour, get most of it off. And let's see. Do some of it under there, sort of at the edge of where the stubble is going to be. I'm assuming his stubble will go down onto his neck anyway. Hasn't been caught, carved, hasn't been sculpted on, but most people's stubble sort of comes down towards. The, I mean, my Adam's apple is is hidden way under this thing, but so Adam's apple there, most people's stubble who have stubble it, it actually comes this has just sort of been sculpted up to that fold and that's not where stubble comes down like this and up and around so I will be bringing that down even though there's going to be a thing across there like his, his necktie thing but having stubble coming down onto his Adam's apple will make a big difference
Okay. Now, what I'm going to do 